What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Hope your day has been good so far. In this Valentine's Day video, we'll be ranking all of the romances from the Mass Effect games. I'll be honest, some of these romances I've never explored or have very little knowledge about, so I had to look up some of them on YouTube. But let's not waste any more time and let's get into this. This should be fun. Okay, first up is Ashley. Ashley is gonna go into the all right tier. Ashley is a complicated character in the series. She's one that people either like or people hate, and hate for a good reason. Especially in Mass Effect 2 where she pretty much chastises us for, you know, being with Cerberus and all that. Caden will do it too. But with Ashley, one thing I do like about her is she is a ride or die. Like when she's behind you, she's really behind you. But her romance overall is just all right. We'll see. Up next, we got, I think, Avela Kajar um, from Andromeda. I will put her in the kind of bad tier. She's the curator for the IA repository. I like Avela enough. She'll just have you going around collecting relics and stuff from the Angara's past. And the only thing I really don't like about hers is you don't really get to explore a lot of it. It seems like they were setting up to continue, you know, the um, games after this one. So the most you'll get from her is a kiss because she doesn't want to, you know, get in the way of your mission to pretty much go kick the Archon's ass and all that. So because you don't really get to explore the relationship a lot, she's in this tier. OK, up next, we got Korra. Korra goes into the all right tier. I put her in front of Ashley. I like Cora quite a bit, especially after reading um, Mass Effect, but I got, I forgot which one it was, but I really started to like this character a lot more. Cora is trying to find her place in this world. She don't really have a purpose. You know, and, um, she was the second in command for Alec Ryder, you know, until he got killed and you know, a sister, son or daughter takes over which does cause some bad blood between us for a little while because Korra was supposed to have that spot. However, um, after getting, after talking to her a little bit more, you start to kind of understand why we were chosen instead. And Korra will say herself, she doesn't really blaze a trail. And as a pathfinder, you've got to be a leader. You've got to be one to blaze that trail and Korra's not really that type of person. She's better as a second in command. But the romance with her is sweet, you know? I think, I forgot if it's like a loyalty mission. No, it's not really a loyalty mission, but you get to hang out with her for a while on Eos. She wants to plant this garden and it'll be a while, you know, before they do it on that desert planet, but she's willing to see, you know, what happens. You get to chill with her by the lake and stuff and it's a really cute scene. So we'll keep her here. Okay, Diana Hours. Hmm. You see, there's a whole ranking for her, right? And to me, because she has that, I gotta put her here. I don't mind Hours as much as other people do. Because to me, she's just kind of there. She's out of the way. She's not like, you know, this annoying character that's just in your face all the time. She's there to report for Battle Space, and she does that. You get to have a little mini romance with her, but overall, it's just, eh. I think if there's a little bit more to do with Diana, I think people would have liked her a bit more. Okay, Garrus. Uh, I'll put Garrus in the beautiful tier. Garrus is our road dog. One of the first people we meet in um, the series someone who was there for all three games. And because of that, you start to kind of kind of get this brother or sister relationship with him. And if you got that sister relationship, it can actually develop into something more. And I do like Shepard and Garrus' relationship. It's cute. I think one of the most famous scenes is when um, they were doing the tango. You know, he actually taught Shepard to dance. Who would have thought that? And by the look on Shepard's face, Garrus was definitely getting some that night. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. <laughs> so yeah, Garrus' relationship is a really good one. 
Okay, Gil. Uh, to be honest, I don't know much about Gil. He's a decent dude. A lot about boosting the batter and stuff with him. He goes... I guess I'll put him in the alright. I kind of want to do kind of bad. Because his... Romance is kind of meh, but... He'll probably be on the end of the alright tier. One notable thing about him is that if you do romance him, your rider and him can become parents at the end. I don't, can't remember if it was Jill that got pregnant for them. He's a um, gay romance, by the way. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. Liara. Get your ass up here. <laughs> you already know where she was going to be at. <laughs> Well, I say Rihanna, she's, she was a homegirl, you know, since Mass Effect 1. When we saved her on Therum, she's there for you through everything. And I think the most important thing about Rihanna is, in terms of Shepard, is that she helps us come back to life, you know, after we got killed in the beginning of Mass Effect 2. She went through hell to um, bring us back, you know, give us the Cerberus and all that. That's how we ended up with them. To me, if someone... <laughs> does that for you like you're my friend for life and if you romanced her you know a mass effect one my girl i ain't never leaving you you help me come back to life like and you've always been good to me like why would i do that so gotta like romance right there okay jaw uh i'll put jaw in the beautiful if I can remember, this one was a really good romance. And mainly because of Johnny and Gar themselves. They're very emotional people. They wear their hearts on their sleeves. And I think in relationships, that can really be a helpful thing. Because there ain't really, probably ain't gonna be, I wanna say no secrets and all that. And he's gonna say what he's feeling to you. And I think he just has a really good connection with Ryder after a while. And it doesn't matter if you're a Scott writer, Sarah writer, Jaws down for whatever. So yeah, really good romance. I like Jaws, I like his spirit a lot. Jack. Now this is one of my favorite romances. Before I move on to Jack though, I want to say for Jaw, the only reason he probably isn't going into the Godlike tier is because you don't really get it for that game. I think if we had a drama the two and stuff, and we got to, you know, date Jaw again and all that. He would definitely be in the godlike. But okay, back to Jack. Um, Jack goes in the great tier. Jack is crazy. No if there's a bust about that, especially in Mass Effect 2. But after talking to her, you know, you really understand why she's like that. And you can really help bring her out of that shell. You know, make her a bit of a softer person. She opens up to you a bit more. Now, Jack does have a trap thing with her though, where if you try to get in them guys too early, you'll lock yourself out of the romance because she'll think you're just like all the other people who've taken advantage of her in her life. So you got to play the long game with her. But if you can do that, it's really rewarding. Especially come Mass Effect 3, Jack's not a main squad mate in Mass Effect 3, but the romance is still really good. You know, you get to hang out with her in the Armax Arena. You get to shoot shit with her. She brings her pet Izo. And she mentioned she got the N7 tattoo on her ass and stuff. So she's down for you. So really, really great romance. Okay, Mr. James Vega. Uh, his isn't really nothing special. I think James is better as a friend. No, he's a really, he's a decent dude though. He just going through some shit in Mass Effect 3. He's still trying to get over, you know, how he lost his squad and all that. And you can really see it still has an effect on him, especially the way he was acting in the beginning. Um, what Shepard does is kind of help him get over that and see his potential as a leader. And that really helps them get closer. But other than that, there ain't really much here. But if you don't romance him, he'll probably end up with Ashley, you know, during the party and stuff. You'll see him trying to get his Mac on in the corner and stuff. 
and you know they've been drinking a little bit so you already know something about to happen but overall just meh for James Javik I ain't gonna lie I don't really know much about Javik's <laughs> uh, and he don't really seem like he'd be the best romance partner at least not for us uh, he's probably about to go into Diana tier Sorry, Javik. Hmm, Miss Kelly Chambers. I'll put her. She's a high, all right. I think if we had her again for Mass Effect 3, I could probably put her a little bit higher, but. Uh, she, she's all right here. Kelly. She does a lot for you. Kelly, if you romance her. She'll actually keep your fish after, you know, you get locked up and everything, and she'll return them to you if you find her down in the docks in three. But Kelly, she's a really good person, you know. She even apologizes to us, you know, for her other role that she had. She was kind of keeping tabs on us for the elusive man. You know, I think Mass Effect 3, she'll admit that to you, you know. But I forgive her because she was down for us the whole time, you know. And her relationship it is kind of cute. You know, it's really flirty. You can have dinner with her. And she'll dance for you. Um, I think at the end of the game. I think you have to go through the collector base and all that stuff. But she'll do a little strip tease for you. And there's just a lot that really comes with a character like her that you wouldn't expect. But because we only really get her for one game, you can romance her in three. But there's not really much to it because she's kind of confined to the docks. And on top of that, she has PTSD. So making her go back onto the Normandy would be kind of wrong. I would feel bad for doing it. But yeah, Kelly Chambers, good woman. I think Carrie Tavesa from Andromeda. I'll put her. She probably will have to go into the kind of bad. She's not quite awful. Carrie is a documentary maker. You can help her out, you know, getting clips and stuff um, around the Nexus and all that. And eventually she gets locked up and you can um, help get her out. You know, she's really trying to do some good around here and she's an add-on relationship, you know, meaning that you can date someone, you know, out of the main crew and date her too. She'll just pretty much admit that, you know, we'll keep this on the hush. So I guess that's a plus to dating her. Same thing with Kelly, too. Um, you can date these two and um, date one of the main characters as well. But yeah, there isn't really much to Carrie's like um, Kelly. So she goes here. Our boy, Liam Costa. I don't remember much about Liam's. I remember him being a really cool dude. Liam, he really just trying to improve the state of things, you know. You know in Andromeda, there's a lot of beef between, you know, the Nexus folks and the Exiles. And so he doesn't think it's right that we have this beef because we're in this strange place together. We got the cat, we got Rokar. You know, there's no time for us to be fighting each other when we got these threats and stuff going on. So I think, you know, he kind of has that sense of responsibility. And I think that would play well into our relationship. He's actually one of the ones I've actually never really looked at. So that's why I don't have a lot on him. But my gut tells me to put him in the all rights here. Okay, Morph. Get your crazy ass over here. Morph is Samara's daughter. She is the one that we have to help kill in Mass Effect 2. Or help with if you want to betray Samara. But why the hell would you do that? Uh, Morph is totally not worth it. Now, you can keep Morph as a squad mate. But if you try to get into that Asari Azure, you're going to end up dying very painfully. And then in Mass Effect 3, she ends up getting turned into a Banshee anyway. So you pretty much kill Samara for nothing, so she definitely goes here. Sorry, crazy. Let's see. Reyes Vidal. Awful. 
I feel like we needed more time with Reyes. He kind of has that Han Solo vibe to him. When I hear people talk about Reyes, that's pretty much what comes up. He's also the charlatan. You know, he's also the one fighting Sloan Kelly um, over at Kadar Port, pretty much for control of the station. But he does it from the shadows and he has his homegirl. I forgot her name. She's Nagara, though. She has her pretty much be the figurehead while he rules things from the background. And as far as the romance, I think you can have sex with him in a storage room or something. But after that, there's not really much to him. Now, Trainer. <laughs> Samantha Trainer. This is one of my favorite romances as well. She goes into the great. Probably would be even beautiful if we had her for more games. But Samantha, she kind of helped with the retrofits on the Normandy. And the only thing about her is that you have to be female shepherds for romancer and all that. But it's worth it. Because Samantha is Samantha's cute. Like I love her and Shepard's relationship a lot. You really help her gain confidence within herself. And then towards the end of the game, she's pretty much a gung-ho soldier with the rest of y'all, so she comes a long way. And then her uh, mission on the uh, Citadel, where she's playing, what is it, Kepis Yashi? With um, Tasuza. And you can pretty much give her confidence to, you know, pretty much kick Tasuza's ass and stuff. And it's just things like that. But she also reminds me of another character from anime. Green Bat Jane, because she's nerdy, but freaky as hell. Now, she didn't turn into a straight thought like Jane did, but I'm going a little bit left with this. Great romance, Lady Samantha. Okay. Our old girl, Samara. <sighs> Sorry, Samara, I gotta put you in the kind of bad, but almost all right tier. Samara is a Justicar, you know, pretty much an Asari monk. We help her kill more of here. Now, the, the reason Samara goes into this tier is because you can't really romance her. She'll reciprocate your feelings, but because of the code, her Justicar code, she can't really go all the way with you. So that's pretty much where the buck stops, but at least she acknowledges your feelings. Okay, Suvi Anwar. We're gonna put Suvi right behind Trainer. She's pretty much our trainer for Andromeda. And I like Suvi. I really like how curious she is in her spirituality. She's a very religious person, which I guess rubs a lot of scientists the wrong way, especially with how far, you know, science and technology has come. It's like, why are you still believing in a god and all this stuff, you know? But I really like that about her. She feels more grounded. Now her curiosity on her hand gets her in trouble when she lifts a space rock and pretty much her mouth starts to swell up and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, she just really adorable. I like her in Rider's Romance. Now she's only she's a female only one, so keep that in mind. But I love Suvi. Thane. We're actually gonna put him right behind Suvi. I love Thane as a character. You know, Thane, our assassin brother. We help him mend things within his family, you know, with his son Koyat and stuff. Casting the Cradle, to me, is one of the more unique missions in Mass Effect 2. And in the whole, ser in the whole series in general. But I really like Thane and Shepard's relationship. You have to be Fem Shep, the romance thing. But I really like how he calls her, her his Siha. I forgot what that means. But the fact he has that pet name for her and stuff. And I love things um, religious side. I love his spirituality as well. He reminds me a lot of Suvi in that way. And then towards the end, you know, after he gets stabbed and stuff, and then you can read, I guess, the... Uh, was there ever a name for the uh, Drell Bible? But you can read that with, um, alongside Koyat as things dying and stuff. And Thane's death hits harder as Femship, because when you're going back over those tastes that Koyak will give you after Thane's memorial service, Femship will actually cry watching them. And it's just sad. 
So, Thane is a really good romance. Rest in peace, brother. Vetra. Vetra goes into the all right tier. I'll put her higher up in here. Vetra is a jack of all trades type of person. Double on the trade because she helps us get most of the shit for the uh, Tempest. The romance with Vetra is pretty nice. You know, Vetra, she really tried to do things for you. Like I remember she tries to cook steak for you. She fails, but it's cute that she even tried. You know, and then you can get something from her right right after that. One thing I really like about Vetra though is her sense of responsibility. Particularly for her um, sister, um, Sidera, Sid. You know, she's been taking care of Sid ever since I think she was a teenager. No telling where her dad went. And while Vetra can be a bit overprotective of Sid, with good reason though, considering that Sid's likely to get herself in trouble with some of the shit she tries to do, Vetra's whole loyalty mission is kind of centered around what I just said. She tried to do some good, in Vetra's name, it backfired, we get captured, Sid ends up getting captured later, and then we have to save her, but I think Sid has a better idea of what Vetra's into because of that. But overall, I do like that sense of responsibility. It do seem like you would have a good relationship with Vetra if you do date her, so... Yeah, we'll put her in the mid though, because it's good, but it's not as good as other um, relationships in Andromeda. Okay, Shaira. We'll put her in the awful, because you don't really get to date Shaira. You pretty much just get the banger, but she is appreciative for the, what you do for her. I remember, um, I think it was the Elcor diplomat Zeltan. He was raising the stink about a secret that got out. And a lot of that happened because of Septimus Araka, you know, that Turian general. He was salty, he couldn't date Shaira, so he released these secrets, and we have to pretty much clear up the misunderstanding. Well, not even the misunderstanding, we pretty much have to get Araka to pretty much do the right thing. Now, she is really appreciative for what you um, did for her, so she'll give you a gift of words, I think. She'll give you a trinket, which you can, um, Go and um, she'll give you a trinket which you can use on one of the worlds in Mass Effect 1. But if you say, like, what, that's it? She'll give you some of that Asari Azure and then send you on your way. So, because you can't really date her, she goes here. Okay, Perlisaria Basale, PB. I'll go actually into the low end of great with PB. I love PB a lot. She is a bubbly character. Like, she's just a hamster on coffee. Kind of like Morden. Now, with her relationship, it can be kind of loose, you know, starting off. Because PB is getting over a relationship, you know, with her um, ex and all that. She's not really ready to open up and really be with anybody again. She doesn't really want strings. But the closer you get to her, you know, she'll eventually want strings. And when it comes to romance though, PB is awkward. <laughs> but it's so funny. And she also has one of the better sex scenes in the whole series as well. So I'll give her that. But overall, just a pretty good romance. I like it. Now, Miranda. Miranda is an interesting one. And for me, she kind of goes in the either great or beautiful tier. You know what? I'll put her in the beautiful tier because I do like Miranda's um, romance a lot. Now, Miranda, she kind of struggles to really get close to people. She's very closed off as a person. Kind of, I wouldn't say, well, not as bad as someone like Jack or not. Um, I wouldn't say as bad as Jack. But that is one of the things with her. The only people she's really close to at that point is... The only people she's really close to by the time you meet her is her old friend the cat and her sister Oriana. In spirit for Oriana because she never even met the girl but she tries to um, keep her alive and stuff. Tries to keep her away from 
her um, controlling father. She escaped her father at a young age. And that's going to lead to some shit later on. But yeah, I think for Miranda, she really needs someone in her life who can truly understand her. You know, someone who also kind of, I guess for lack of better words, she needs a strong willed person to be with her. But once she really can kind of break through to her, her and Shepard's relationship is really good. Now in Mass Effect 3, she's kind of secretive because, you know, she's trying to stop her father. She's on the run from Cerberus and she doesn't really reveal a lot. We pretty much have to figure out what's going on, which is by circumstance. We end up running into, you know, what the Lucid Man and Cerberus were up to on Horizon where we meet her there. But after that, you know, Miranda is free to date and you can go to the Citadel, you can go to the casino. And I think I just think her and Shepard's relationship is good enough to warrant actually being in a beautiful tier. Now, Jacob Taylor. Jacob's romance is hated by a lot of people in the uh, Mass Effect fan base. Mainly because Jacob cheats on your shepherd, and because of that, he is going to have to go here. Sorry, Jacob. I do like you, though. Thing is, after Mass Effect 2, you know, he'll move on to um, Bran Cole. He'll meet her at some point and end up dating her. Now, part of me gets it because after Mass Effect 2, we get locked up because of what happened over in the Viper Cluster. We blew that cluster to hell to keep the Reapers from pouring through. Now, eventually, we were going to have to face the music for that. Now, from Jacob's perspective, he probably don't know if we're ever getting out, so he moves on. Now, it is still fucked up, but part of me gets it. Now, as um, female Shepard, you can slap the shit out of him for this, which it is warranted. So, sorry, Jacob. Like I said, I do like you, but as a romance partner, knowing the fact you're going to do our Shep dirty, nah, I can't fuck with you, man. Um, now, Steve Cortez. I don't really know much about Steve's either. I'll put Steve in the all right tier though, because I do like Steve. Now, Steve is going through it at the beginning of Mass Effect 3 because his um, husband, Robert, dies. You know, and he was on um, call with him right before he died. So it's still fresh in Steve's mind. But we have to um, help him get over that, you know, try to move on with his life. And that ends up opening room for a uh, male shepherd to try and romance him. You know, as a way to help him move on and stuff. And they get really close. Now, I would kind of feel bad about doing this, at least in game. Because, like I said, the man um, just lost his husband not too long ago. But Steve can go in the all right tier. Um, I think that's fair. Now, Caden. Caden's also going to go in the all right tier. He's going to go towards the end, though. His relationship is similar to Ashley's. They fall off the same um, story paths, mainly because they're option characters for each other. One can die, the other one can live. Well, technically, both can die later, but that's besides the point. But um, Caden, it was interesting to learn about him being, you know, an L2 biotic and the problems that they have. You actually get a whole mission in Mass Effect 1 centered around that type of thing. And you get to know a little bit about his backstory, especially with that one Syrian instructor he had um, during his days in the, I think, the BAAT Academy. And how he ended up having to kill him to protect another uh, classmate. And you know how she stopped talking to him after he did that because she was a sweetheart. And by him, and by Caden, you know, killing that dude, it kind of scared the shit out of her and made her afraid of him but Caden is a decent dude just his relationship is not that interesting now here's someone who's interesting our girl Tally Zora just like we are Tally get your ass all the way up here in Godlike you belong in the Godlike tier hun Tally's relationship is one of the best ones in the series like we are in Gara, she's there for you for all three games. Even though I do got to say this about Liara, she's there for a little bit of two. She's 
pretty much DLC. She's and if you don't have the DLC, she's just kind of there for just a couple of missions. But yeah, Tally. I feel like with her, we kind of watched her grow up, you know? She was just a teenager. Well, maybe around 17, 18 when we meet her, you know, on her pilgrimage and all that. And we see her growth, like she's an admiral by Mass Effect 3. Not to mention, she's just a sweetheart, but she's nothing to mess with at all. She will definitely, <laughs> she'll definitely fuck your ass up if you're not careful. Her relationship is one of the closer ones as well because you help her out of a lot of situations. You save her from Fist's thugs. You know, you help get her out of a treason case. And then you help save her planet. You help save her people. Just evolution. Um, and I think another thing too is just the evolution of um, her and Shepard in a sexual way as well. Because when you have sex with her in Mass Effect 2, she has a nasty cold that's going to last for a while because her body is not used to being in contact with other people. But she was willing to do that for us because she loves us that much. And then in Mass Effect 3, she's used to us at that point. So she doesn't even have any of them symptoms anymore. So I think just for being a ride or die, you know, her connection with Shepard pretty much going through all of this stuff with them. And you know, just seeing her growth makes Tally just a really good romance. So that's everyone, y'all. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Where would you rank these romances? Let me know in the comments. I think I'll take a picture of this tier list and I'll post it on X slash Twitter. So if you guys want to compare over there as well, we can do that. Thank you for watching, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. D -D -D